Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be doing some hot foil stamping with the Essentials Circles hot foil stamps and I wanted to make a foiled frame around my shaker card window here. So I just wanted to share that I'm going to be working with three different sizes of circles and one is the hot foil stamp and it's the middle size. And then I have the larger circle shape, which is larger than the hot foil stamp, and I'm going to use that to die cut some uh, foam sheets to create my shaker box. And then I'm also going to use that same larger size circle to die cut some cardstock into a circle shape that I'm going to stamp happy as a clam and the ocean waves, the scene that's going to be showing through that window. And then the smaller of those circle dies is going to cut the opening through the foiled frame and all of this will make sense as I'm going through each of the steps. So to get started I'm going to take a quarter sheet of uh, cardstock and I'm going to grab the hot foil stamp and go ahead and get that positioned where I want it on my panel. Now I'll be trimming this panel down later on so I'm going to get as close to centered in that upper section as I can by eyeballing it and then when I trim it down if I was off I can just trim off. Um, it'll end up being you know a quarter inch smaller than the actual card base. So now I've got a piece of gold foil with the ugly side against the paper and the pretty side against the hot foil stamp. I preheated my hot foil platform on low setting and then once it beeped I went ahead and put my uh, layers of a hot foil stamp and foil and paper onto the platform and I set the timer for 15 seconds. Once it beeped at me that it was ready I went ahead and sent that through my Gemini die cutting machine to go ahead and press that foil onto the cardstock. So after that's cooled I'm going to go ahead and peel away the hot foil stamp and then here's the great reveal Woo, I got a perfect foiling on this. Actually, I've done this a couple times and I get a perfect foiling every time. Low setting, 15 seconds, I'm telling you. And uh, I set aside the excess foil there, the waste. I'll use it for some other project in the future. Now to cut the opening um, through that frame, I'm going to line up a smaller size circle die. This is the essential circle uh, die set that I'm working with and there's one that fits right inside there and I used washi tape to tape it down to the interior so that my washi tape wouldn't cross over the foil and lift up the foil inadvertently. So you do have to pay attention to that make sure you don't ruin that beautiful foil work. So then I'm going to take the hot foil stamp and place it back over the top just temporarily here inside the misty because I want to line up this sentiment just outside of that circle frame and I want to curve it. It's actually a straight sentiment that says for you, but I wanted to curve it and to make it curve, first I had to get it mounted a, dist a little bit of a distance away from where the actual foiling is there on my window. And then I'm going to use the die over there on the lid to just kind of nudge um, that stamp into more of a curved shape and then I'll check it here and it's like, yep. It's perfect and now it's kind of curved around in that area there where exactly where I wanted it so now I'm going to use some anti-static powder and prep the surface of the paper and then use my clean sweep brush. I love this brush. I wish I had a second one. I should get myself a second one because I use it all the time. Now I'm going to ink up with Versamark and go ahead and stamp that sentiment right there and I wanted to do some heat embossing so I'm using Hero Arts gold embossing powder and then I'm going to be very careful. I preheat my heat gun for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to come in just close enough to melt that powder and back off and come in and back off again because the heat from the heat gun can cause the foil to kind of shrink and lose its shininess there. So you do want to be really careful if you plan to heat emboss anywhere near where you've done some hot foil stamping because the heat will affect it. It doesn't show up. Probably most people wouldn't notice it. Um, I know it because I could see it very clearly, but anybody else looking at the card probably wouldn't even know um, that that did happen a little bit. So now I've got my scene that I stamped on that larger piece of cardstock that I'd cut with the larger circle die. And I went ahead and gold embossed my images and my sentiment on there. And then I did a little bit of ink blending to create the ocean effect. And then I want to get this mounted in place onto my base card. 
Now I've already trimmed down this panel um, with my paper trimmer. I did that off camera um, to make sure that it now measures four by five and a quarter inches. And then I'm using post-it notes to anchor that in the center of the opening there because post-it notes only have sticky at one end. And so I don't have to worry about the foil um, getting lifted off by the adhesive from the post-it note. And then I just tack down the other end with some washi tape. So it's kind of like just creating a little bridge over the top of that uh, scene and the exterior of the frame so that I don't damage any of that foiling. Then I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of that circle and some glue. I just ran a bead of glue all around the very outer edge. And then I can go ahead and lay that down onto my base card and press it firmly into place. And because I used those post-it notes and washi tape, um, I didn't affect any of the foiling on there. It didn't get stuck to any of the sticky stuff on the post-it notes or on the washi tape. So I could then lift that out of place and burnish it down smoothly. Now the reason I applied a fine bead of glue around the outer edge of that circle is I want to make sure that none of my shaker bits or confetti or sprinkles or whatever I'm putting in there gets stuck behind that um, seam there. So now it's time to apply um, the foam sheets and these things are great because they have adhesive on both sides and you can die cut um, shapes even with low profile dies uh, using your Gemini Junior, it die cuts beautifully. And then um, it's also awesome because there's, when you make a shaker box, a lot of times you're adding strips of foam, right? And it's a square shape, but here I'm dealing with a circle. And it'd be kind of a pain um, to do the foam strips with the circle. Here I can just cut, it's almost a full uh, card front size piece of foam. And I did two of them because I wanted a double thickness of that foam tape so and it sticks so well and it holds its shape really nicely and maybe because of the liner paper I don't know but it was really great to work with anyway I used some anti-static pow uh, powder to brush along the inside because I want to make sure that I neutralize any adhesive that might um, grab a hold of my little sparkly sequins and my stamped images I love to use small stamped images as filler for my shakers. I think it's just such a fun way to do it. And these little clamps look so pretty in these colors. I just stamped in a color of ink that was darker than the uh, cardstock I was working with to have enough contrast, but still allow the coloring of the cardstock um, to dominate there. And I just think it's a really easy and quick way to get your shaker bits made. <laughs> and then I added my sparkly stars, which are my favorite. And then it's time to add the crystal clear plastic to seal it all in. So now I don't have to worry, everything's in place. Um, that stuff is sealed in there, it's locked tight. And then I'm gonna take that top panel and add some double-sided sticky tape to the top three, uh, or well, the top and the side edges. I don't really need to add any to the bottom because the foam sheet there is exposed right beneath that window plastic. So I can just go ahead and take this top panel and just put it in place. And I just peeled the liner paper back partially so I could kind of tack it down. And then once I was sure, I could go ahead and remove those liner papers away from the rest. And it's all together now. And I love, love the amount of shaker action I get when I add a double layer of foam. There's a lot of movement in there. You can add even more shaker stuff. <laughs> So I hope you're enjoying this release with all the sea themed uh, critters and you know, like the seaweeds and the swimmers and the fish and the shark, the whale shark. It's a fun release. And these hot foil stamps are also really fun and easy to work with. Thanks for watching.